So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have with us Harsh, who will be telling us about ESOC, Google Summer of Code, how to apply, what's the eligibility criteria, how to write a proposal, how to choose an organization, everything right from the beginning to the end. So first of all, hello Harsh. Hi Amisha. So thank you for coming. Let me introduce Harsh. He is from my college, Triple IT Delhi, and he is going to join as a software engineer in Microsoft in the upcoming months. And uh, apart from that, he cleared GSOC in 2021. And he was also a mentor with GSOC in 2022. And the organization was KDE. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. I was also a mentor of a uh, season of KDE, which is a similar program to GSOC, but it is uh, specific to our organization, KDE. Okay, okay. So great. So he will tell us everything about, you know, GSOC. What is it? Why you should apply to it? So we're super excited for this video and I hope it will be helpful for everyone. And the deadline this year is 8th April for GSOC. So with that, let's start the call. Harsh, what is GSOC? What is Google Summer of Code? And why you should apply to it? Right. So let's start from what is GSOC. So Google wants to help uh, these open source projects and organizations to grow more. So a uh, one big problem that these open source organizations faced before GSOC and other programs were there is new contributors were hard to, you know, uh, say induct to their organization because there's no direct incentive to say, start working in an open source organization. Only when you say, start using their product, found some issues, then you'd like to say, hey, I can fix those. So I would fix them, right? So it's a long process. So Google said, okay, uh, we have benefited from open source uh, projects ourselves. So let's try to contribute in some way. So they launched this program back in early 2000s to induct newcomers to open source programs, uh, open source organizations. And earlier there were a lot of the small organizations. Now I think all major open source organizations like to take part in the software outreach because from there they can get new contributors without say spending anything, right? Google pays the developers. And then these developers uh, build features, fix bugs on these open, open source projects. And why you should apply to it? First of all, you get paid. <laughs> if that's not an incentive straight away, so you get something to put in your resume. Uh, you experience, uh, say, working in a real life environment. So uh, before working in the GSOC project, I did not have any experience in working in, say, uh, a big project or some project which is being used by the real world people. Mm -hmm. So the project that I worked on was uh, being used by say hundreds of thousands of people. And then I could contribute something to it. So it adds more value and it say it gives a good feeling to you. Okay, great, great. And how much is the stipend? So <laughs> during my time, the stipend was $1,500. Uh, this year also, I think it's $1,500 for short short period projects. I think last year this concept was introduced, this new. We have two types of projects, a medium uh, medium length project and long length project. The medium length project pays you around fifteen hundred dollars and for a long duration project you'll get paid around three thousand okay. dollars. For India, yeah, this is for India. Okay, okay. It is adjusted to different countries according to their PPP, just purchasing power. Okay, That's so key. there are a lot of benefits. You will get a good resume and, you know, Google Summer of Code. So, you yeah, can prestigious. Right. Yeah. And also, you'll get uh, connected to a lot of people who are working in the industry who are, say, not, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they are from the big companies like, say, say, TensorFlow would have people working from, say, Google or other people who are using TensorFlow extensively. So, you'd get exposure to their thinking process, uh, you can also say try to get a referral if you want, if you are like well connected with them. What is the eligibility criteria and like what all organizations participate in GSO? So uh, the eligibility criteria is uh, you should be a newcomer to uh, open source. So, I mean, this is uh, quite debatable who is a newcomer, who isn't. So GSO uh, allows you to apply at max two times. So. You can participate in GSOC once and then you can apply another time, right? And also there's no limit that you should be a university student now. So you can apply while you are a working professional as well. 
but you should be open to uh, sorry new to open source and now who is new who is not is a debate which is going on in the mentor channel every now and then they are working professionally has tried to join in our project should we allow him so they would prefer someone who is new to open source right but if uh, you are doing well and you are say already you have already contributed elsewhere you, they would still consider your application okay and you should be 18 plus years of age so that is one criteria right. yeah. okay so like what about the organizations that participate how many are there and the, like how did okay, you so i don't know find the out exact number to be honest yeah but there are 100 plus say, about 200 uh, that's an approximate i might be wrong but there are a lot of organizations which are participating right now so a lot of organizations apply to uh, this program first and then a few of them are shortlisted and put up on google summer of code website then students try to uh, look about these organizations try to find what kind of projects they are working on try to see what kind of new ideas they have for this year's epoch and then try to pick up a few projects and work on them what do you think should be the requirement before applying so do you need to know some tech stack or uh... is that okay if you don't know any development so what is the you know prerequisite to apply for gsoc the yeah, prerequisite or the minimum criteria is you should be able to understand what's going on uh, in say developing world what kind of things you are working on uh, say generic idea okay you don't have to be super expert at anything but say you have some idea that how web development works right maybe you are not say super familiar with the tech stack that people are working on Say you have just done HTML and CSS, but you are not familiar with React or some other things that are used in the industry, maybe Angular. So, uh, but when you'll go to these projects and you'll find say what kind of things they are using, so you'll try to learn about them, right? And once you are comfortable, then you can start contributing. Okay, you you won't be able to start uh, right away. You it will take some time in every project. So, according to me, the prerequisite would be you should have some understanding of development. You should have some prior experience of development. It shouldn't be like that you are doing it for the first time, and then you can say learn on the go. Right? Once you go there, you find that these things are required to work on this project. I'd start learning one by one. Right? So for reference, so some people say that uh, you know you should be familiar with the tech stack that they are using, the pro uh, that the project is using, or the organization is using. But I would like to differ from that. So I would say so because my personal experience was that uh, I was not familiar with the tech stack. Uh, my project was built in Qt HTML, um, and I was not familiar with anything, right? So I started uh, reading a lot of documentation. Their documentation is super nice, super neat and clean. You try to search something, you'll get it straight away. Okay. And the other thing is that. Uh, when i joined the project people were really nice okay so it's not just the tech stack you should also try to join the community and see uh are your doubts getting resolved on time and stuff like that yeah oh. so the prerequisite shouldn't be just your tech stack it uh, if you are familiar with development you you can learn on the go yeah. okay okay so that's a great advice that you should learn on the go so because as usual you cannot have a hold on all the tech stacks and there are different kinds of tech being used in different you know right projects and also so the right so the other thing is that say if you are familiar with the tech stack it would be mostly in say web development or android development or say flutter development and then when some tech stack is being used say some popular tech stack is being used and then a lot of contributors would try to get into the project right so the competition increases significantly so you are working on a web development project a lot of people are familiar with web development And then they would try to do the same as you are doing, right? So it's not like people don't get selected there. Of course, they do get selected. But I would say rather than choosing just a project right out of the tech stack that you're already familiar with, try to see what project interests you more. So how do you choose an organization? That's a big question, you know, because there's so many organizations. I just said two hundred plus. So how do you find those? And which is the right organization to apply to? right so that's a difficult question to answer everyone would have a different way of approach right some people filter by tech stack as i already told you uh some people would filter by something that they have already used say i was using kde from a long time right and then i tried to find out what kind of projects kde is working on and then i found a project which is say say suitable for my you know uh 
voice of skills that I have. So, um, try to look out for, I don't know, <laughs> this, this could be really um, dependent on the person who is choosing an organization. It could be the tech stack wise, if you are, say, super confident in a tech stack, could be your, uh, say, organizations that you are already familiar with. It could be something that excites you. Say someone is working on, say, a college has a branch, right? CSB, computer science and biosciences. So someone is interested in this field, biosciences. Mm -hmm. They can try to look for organizations which are working in this field. There are a few organizations which come in these sorts and which work in this field of biosciences. So yeah, that is... And also you can look for what kind of impact an organization is creating. Say some organizations are working uh, for underprivileged or some kind of thing, and then you would say like to contribute because it will help society in a larger way. You can look into that. So it could be different for different people. That's the real answer. Yeah. Okay, great. So it can be tech stack based, interest based, anything that you like, right? So. Yeah. Then, okay, so how to write a proposal? Like that's the million dollar question. How do you write a proposal? So what did what was the approach you followed? Uh, and you know anything special that you think one should keep in mind while writing a proposal? Yeah, so writing a proposal uh, is so this starts when you have finalized your say, a list of projects that you would like to write a proposal for. So. It uh, typically it's up to two or three. You should not write a proposal for more than two or three uh, projects. So once you've selected the project, you have some idea of what the project is uh, doing, and you have you have gone through the list of ideas that the mentors have proposed on their idea page. You can they uh, filter out some ideas which you would like to work on. And then discuss those ideas with the mentors, right? Because on the ideas page, uh, so every organization publishes an idea page, right? So on the list of uh, ideas, you would select some idea that you would like to work on and then discuss. So there will also be mentors names just below the idea, who has written this idea, who has thought of this idea. And then you can contact them in the community channel and then try to say, get more thoughts about what they really want. because the text is really, really short, right? They have just a say, broad idea and they've written a few lines about it, but it's not enough, right? So you should always try to talk to those mentors, what they're thinking, what kind of uh, end goal they are looking at so that your goals and their goals are aligned because it's, it's, I mean, the users who are using it, right? And they are more familiar with what the project is about. So you should discuss it with them. Then try to create some mockups if it's required, right? If, it, if the mockups are not required, some kind of design would be required. Some, if you're working on a code, so you would like to have some idea of uh, how this thing would work, right? Some kind of, say, I don't know, UML that is required. Some kind of design, some kind of uh, code or whatever you have. You would like to write it, design it, show it to them, get their feedback, improve upon it. And then this is an iterative process, right? So, the important thing here is that you should always discuss with the mentors. Like, they will tell you what to do. Um, some person who is trying to go through the idea page and then try to write a proposal on their own would not be able to, say, achieve the same results as someone who is often uh, talking to their mentors, like reiterating the whole design and everything. So that is super important. And then once you've finalized your GSOC proposal, then you would like to, uh, what we follow in KD is we would like to send it to the mailing list so that all the people who are active in the community would like to add a few more comments, a few more things. And then you would get a fair idea about how your proposal is, and then finally submit it on the GSOC proposal. Okay, so if you discuss with the mentor, your chances of the proposal actually getting selected are like much, much higher. Right, because your goals and their goals would align eventually, and then it would be a much uh, higher success rate. Okay, so yeah, and I, I'll also provide the link to the proposal that has submitted in the description. So do check that out, right? So that's great. What was your experience? Like, how did you come to know that you were selected, and what happened next? What, how were the next few months? Yeah, so. 
I was contributing from a long time before I was selected. I was contributing say, from three, four months. So I was already familiar with people and I was already working. So it was, uh, so the contribution period was not something new to me. I was say, working more on the project. But uh, when I was selected, it was more like, uh, I don't know, the first breakthrough, I would say. For my, as a, as a student developer, this was the first breakthrough, which was significant enough, right? Uh, the other project that I was working on may be important for me, may be important for the people who, who I was working for, but it's not, say, well recognized in the student community and all. So this was the first breakthrough, which gave me some satisfaction, yeah, that I've done something good. And uh, this, is just a, this is just the first stepping stone, right? Once you are, say, selected for GSOC, you have many other options. You would get, say, <laughs> freelance work more easily. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You'd get uh, a lot of projects more easily because you have already worked on something which is being used by, say, a lot of people, right? So they know that you know how to write industry-level code. So people would trust you more easily. That's the main benefit. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. So, yeah, and, you know, companies will select you easily because GSOC, that tag, probably. But, yeah, that's important. Yeah. You were contributing for a long time. So, people actually want to just skip to the end goal that, you know, we want to clear GSOC. They don't, they are not actually right. interested in the work sometimes. So, that's important. Right, even after, uh, say, the contribution period was over. So, the main idea of GSOC is to induct new uh, contributors and then, the idea is to make them stay for a long time. So you'd say you'd see that uh, in the mentors page or the mentors discussion panel, it is often discussed that how many people started contributing during the GSOC period, and then how many people actually stayed after that. So this is <laughs> a big feedback for Google also that is their program actually successful. If people are say just contributing and leaving, then it's a negative feed for, feedback for Google. Right, their program is not so good enough, so they would like to change a few things. So it is really important that uh, you contribute, uh, not just because you want to be selected for GSOC, but you want to contribute to the community as a whole. It's not like you would commit your lifetime to this. <laughs> That's not realistic at all. But yeah, sometime even after the contribution period, uh, you should stay there because you have you now have the experience, right? You now have the experience of working on the project for say four months at least, right? So stay back. Uh, try to give some more, not directly in the form of code, but say help new on uh, newcomers, right? And they're trying to onboard to the project, uh, help newcomers. Say if you have any issues in the project, you can list it on their website, uh, on their bug tracker website. And then this is also say not a direct form of contribution like adding on more code, but it's really valuable contribution. Got it, got so I stayed it. back, mentored a couple of projects. Yeah, so that way I tried to stay active in the community. But now, uh, more or less, I'm not so active, but I would like to get back to it again after my graduation, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And so how did you get selected as a mentor? Like uh, 2021, you cleared GSOC and 2022, you were back as a mentor with KDE. So how did that work? Like, did you have to submit something? or? Yeah, right. So... Uh, if you are already, if you've already worked on a project before, and you would like to mentor for the same project, it's not a. I would say it's not. You don't have to do much, right? So, because my projects had, say, I, they had like four mentors, but two of them were busy being the admin for the same organization this year. So we had four mentors for the project. Two of them were now the admin for the uh, for the organization this year in 2022. So they needed more mentors and I was active in the community at that time. So I asked, can I be a mentor? They said, yeah, okay, that's great. Because they already know you have worked uh, and your say, your communication style is good enough and that's good enough. You can be a mentor. There's no stipend for that, to be honest. <laughs> so you don't have to look for other motives to do that. Okay, okay. So there is no specific uh, application process or... Interview. Yeah, there's no application process. Yeah. No interviews, uh, at least not in my organization. It could be different for different organizations. Okay, okay. So I think we have answered a lot of things. So anything else, if anyone has any doubts related to GSOC, I think you can definitely contact Hush on LinkedIn. So is that right, Hush? Yeah, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, wherever you like. Yeah. Okay, so I'll provide all the links in the description. And thank you so much, Hush, for giving us your valuable time. And uh, I hope people will actually be benefited from this since the deadline is close by. So thank yeah. you so much, Hush.
right and just one more thing before leaving so even if you are not like in this year don't be disheartened it's okay there is like slightly uh, say you have really less time to think about all these things and then write a good proposal it's okay you can try this year and even if you are not selected this year you can make it next year yeah so this video is not meant for just this year it would help you say learn about new things and then you can get selected later on also yeah that's it yeah. thanks for having me bye 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 everyone so bye hash so thank you for joining us